So I'll just say a few words to set the context of the meeting and then we'll pick up again from the uh, 1980 something meeting. So this is a small group of us all old males of different nationalities talking about the history of tech uh, and both the past history and the future history, let's put it that way. And I've suggested this as the topic because I'm going to be giving a talk at the online tech meeting in August and I've chosen the ambitious title towards 21st century digital typography. And digital typography is the title of Don Canoe's connected papers on tech, metafont, and computer modern, and other things related to this, such as bitmap rendering and so forth. And I believe it's got a section also on the areas of tech or more areas of tech, I think it's called. So that's a collection of his writings and it's typeset using the concrete modern fonts, which I found quite attractive. So before we start recording, Arthur and Nelson were talking about uh, a video of the first meeting of Tug. And Arthur apparently has seen the video and Nelson apparently was at that meeting. So I've asked them to, asking them now to reminisce a bit about what happened then. Yeah, well, I, I don't remember any video recording that was going on. Remember, this is early, late 70s, early 80s is fairly early for video being common at meetings. Uh, but certainly it was an exciting time because in the 70s, I had spent time developing a document formatting system uh, called Document. Uh, that was somewhat along the lines of TROF and NROF, which I didn't know about at the time because that work at Bell Labs hadn't been published yet. Uh, and when I got to hear Don speak in the late 70s at Xerox Park about his work on tech and, and showed examples of its output, I realized that everything that had gone before really ought to be dropped and, and replaced by tech. And I've been a tech enthusiast ever since. Um, even though, as we've heard in these conversations, there are people who uh, would like to provide input and markdown and XML and, and various other systems um, that perhaps ultimately arrive in a tech typeset form and an HTML presentation form. Um, a, a lot of what I do in science requires precise uh, mathematics and and precise figures and tables and so on. And so I've never been terribly enthusiastic about HTML unless it was largely directed at prose. Um, but uh, for certainly for scientific writing, I view tech as really the only, only possibility. And I can put in a plug here in the next several months, possibly early next year, there will be a third edition of the LaTeX Companion I've been helping Frank Middlebach, who's doing all of the very hard work in preparing this new volume uh, in proofreading various chapters. And I shipped off the latest one to him yesterday. And uh, there's a lot of exciting stuff happening uh, that uh, will be revealed in the new edition. It's been a long time since the second edition. So the new one will be most welcome for people. Well, Yeah. Well, I'm curious, Nelson. Uh, uh, Jonathan is saying that I saw the video of that uh, very, very early tug meeting. And um, I'm wondering what your impression was at that time of the tech users group. Because uh, it was so so much smaller than it is today, and yet there are people who were probably with you at that meeting who are still around today. 
Yes, I think Barbara Beaton and I sort of jointly hold the record for the most hug meetings attended. She's missed a couple and I've missed a couple, but otherwise we've been here from the beginning. Um, yeah, it's in the in the mid to late 80s, the meetings got quite large, two to 300 people would show up. But of course, this again was before the web made it possible to exchange things more easily. And so you really had to be there to hear about what was going on. A big driver in the early days was uh, the problem of getting output. I happened to have the, the same computer system, uh, at least the same hardware that Don Knuth had. He, his site ran a different operating system. If you look at my keynote address on the history of tech and Metaphone, I point out that there were of the order of a dozen different operating systems that ran on the PDP-10. Different universities had different versions of the OS, but to a large extent, software was easily ported from one to the other. And so at Utah, we were able to get tech uh, running essentially immediately, but the problem was we didn't have output devices because this predates laser printers. And so I spent time developing DVI drivers to print on dot matrix printers and the BBN bit graph dot, matrix, uh, dot uh, display. Uh, and then when the Apple laser writer came out in 1984 or five uh, and the, a year before the HP laser jet, I also targeted those devices and we, and once those became available, printing became fairly, fairly convenient and affordable. In the early 80s, we had a large Imogen uh, machine, which was probably the size of a large dining room table, quite, quite a big device and driven from a VAC 750. Uh, and it produced fairly nice output. The people working on it, some of them were, were Stanford graduates who had, knew about Knuth's work. Others, I think, had probably spilled out of Xerox Park. And for a period uh, before desktop laser printers became available, that was really what you, you look for. But that was a $20,000 to $30,000 device, which put it out of the reach of small research groups and certainly individuals. Um, but when desktop laser printers became available at around $5,000, then departments could consider buying one or more of these and scattering them around. And, and of course, now you can get such devices for a few hundred dollars. You just pay for it in supplies when you buy the cheap hardware. But it certainly has made a huge difference. Um, also through uh, a, a small startup company here in Salt Lake, I had uh, the opportunity to visit Adobe before it became a public company and, and learned about the work that was going on the back room on the laser printer support uh, in PostScript, which was first released in the Apple Laser Writer. And so that was an exciting development. And uh, uh, we, we realized that this really changed things because although we'd had electric typewriters since the 1960s, it wasn't possible to include graphics and in documents except by printing them out and pasting things in and, and then reproducing those pages. And with 300 dots per inch uh, laser printers, uh, graphics now could become a routine part of documents and it, and it gets better all the time. There's new stuff that Frank is describing in the third edition of the LaTeX Companion that will introduce new capabilities that many people in the tech world probably aren't aware of, even though they may already have the software that's needed already on their systems. It's just that when there are the order of 5,000 packages uh, in the tech live distribution these days, it's hard for most people to get an overview of what uh, are the important ones to look for. <clears throat> 